Hey everybody, it is Nancy the Disorderly Stitcher time! Yay! All right, so it is Sunday, July 17th, 2022. Um, summer, has, summer is half over. And I'm really trying not to get into my midsummer slump that, you know, knowing that school's a month away. Um, so I'm still trying to be as creative as possible. Um, you know, this is my time to be creative and, and I hate wasting it. But with that being said, um, I've wasted some time this week because I was making mistakes. So yeah, I'm human. But anyway, so I bought this pattern called Swoon 16 by um, Thimble Blossoms. And you only need 16 fat quarters and the background fabric, which is the white, and then the sashing fabric, and the and it's also the outside border. There's no other outside border on it, okay? And I think I showed you my um, Nantucket Summer fat quarter bundle. And I don't know if it was the progressive lenses. I don't know if it was the ruler. I don't know if it was my brain. I don't know well, it was my brain, obviously. I did all did do this after coffee, so I can't blame the fact that I was asleep. But for some reason, I was not reading the ruler correctly. And I know, measure twice, cut once. And I screwed up. I screwed up three fat quarters. Now, for those of you who do not know what a fat quarter is, a fat quarter is a piece of fabric that's approximately 18 by 22 inches. Okay. So what you do is you take a fat quarter, uh, a fat quarter, you take a yard of fabric and you cut it, um, a yard, you know, 36 inches. So you cut it across the middle. So then you have two approximately 22 by 36 pieces. And then you cut each of those in half. So then you get your four 18 by 22 pieces. This pattern is cut in a way that you have to get a certain number of pieces of each size out of the fat quarter. So it's not like I can just fold it in half and start cutting strips. If you don't cut correctly, you don't get the number of pieces you need. And that's what happened. I was cutting and I didn't get the pieces I needed. So for example, you know, I need so many of this size and I need so many of this size and I need so many of this size and I can't tell you what they are because that would be cheating. So this is one of the prints that I screwed up and I just, I love it because it has the navy in it and a lighter blue in it. And I was really mad at myself. So anyway, so how did I fix that? Well, yesterday, um, there's a shop, a nearby shop called the sewing place and the sewing place has been around for about 40 years and it's located on route 30, which is the Lincoln highway between Chambersburg PA and Gettysburg. And it's in an area close to next door to Caledonia state park. And it was opened by um, the current owner's dad and then um, Bob and then Michael took over and then he and his wife opened a second store called Sew and Sweep in Westminster, Maryland. So yesterday was the big 40th anniversary sale and I thought, okay, I don't need more fabric. One of these days I'll take some pictures of my fabric stash and I'll put them in. But I know they have that fabric and I'm going to go down there and see if I can replace the three fat quarters that I screwed up. So I called a friend of mine and I said, Hey, do you want to go down? I'm so I'm not, I'm only looking for like three fat quarters, but you know, if you want to go down, I'll pick you up. She said, sure. So I picked her up and we were there when it opened at 10. She and I and everybody else were there at 10. It was a nut house in a good way. And of course you watch what everybody else is picking up because it's like, if you see something that you want and somebody else picks it up, you're like, Oh, please put it down, put it down, put it down. 
And that happened a couple of times. I'm like, put that down. So anyway, I walked in, completely ignored all the clearance fabric. Now fabric was 30% off. If you finish the bolt, it was 35% off. Notions were 25% off. He had some machines on sale. Anyway, I walked in the door. I bypassed the, the clearance fabric that was out front in bins. And I went straight for where I knew this fabric was. And lo and behold, I found two of the three fat quarters that I messed up. So I found this one that I just showed you. I just love it. And I found this one. I don't know if you can see it. Little blue flowers and the green and the white. Can you see it? All right. So anyway, I'm happy. I still have a few more. You can just see them right there that I could cut into if I absolutely have to. Um, but yeah, so I picked those up and then there was a jelly roll. Now, if you're not familiar with the, what a jelly roll is, I think I showed you this. It's a um, collection of two and a half inch strips that Moda cuts um, one strip from each fabric in the fabric collection. And I had thought about getting a jelly roll of Nantucket Summer to make a rug. And um, yes, I do make the rugs and then I walk on them, which totally freaks people out. But anyway, and then I convinced myself, oh, you don't need to spend the money on that. Well, when fabric is 30% off, so there was one jelly roll there. And this is that time it was like this woman picked it up. And I'm like, watching. And as soon as she put it down, I snagged it. So this will become a rug at some point. But I just love these fabrics. I'm not a blue person, but these just, they, they warm my heart. You know, I'm not a beach person. I'm not necessarily a New England person, but, you know, I just, I love them. I love them. So, yeah. So I'm going to have a quilt and I'm going to have a rug and everything's cool and right with the world. And now I'm just, you know, so before in between messed up video and this video, I did cut the one fat quarter and I didn't make any mistakes. So pat myself on the back. All right. Next topic finishes. Yay. I finished blue skin by Plum Street Samplers. It is done on 36 count Delaware crossing by needle and flax. If you get the opportunity, go over to Rachel's videos and, or her website. Um, she is a one woman show. So, um, between having to do all the work herself, her kids do help her in the summertime, but you know, doing all this herself and the supply chain issues, she's a little bit behind, but I wouldn't worry about it. She's a great lady. She keeps track of her orders. She's hilariously funny. Um, she's like me. She just starts rambling and it's just fun to watch. But anyway, there's blue skin. Isn't he cute? So this is a combination of classic color works, weak style works and DMC. And you can see the variegation in the horse, at least I hope you can. And that's from the overdyed floss, okay? Um, when working with overdyed floss, you want to go one cross, one X at a time to get that variegation, if the variegation is important to you, okay? And for me, it's like if I'm going to spend that money on the overdyed floss, I want to see the variegation. And I think it makes the horse look really cool. I mean, he looks like a horse, you know, because horses aren't a flat color. So anyway, I think this is going to be a pillow. Um, I've never made one before. I got to do some research. Um, you know, what we do before YouTube. So um, I don't know if you put like interfacing on the back of it or what you do on the back of it, because I'm sure if you just stuff this the way it is, you run the risk of whatever you fill the pillow with coming through your linen. So that'll be on my radar in the future. 
I don't know if it'll be this summer. So that's blue skin. It's so cute. And my other finish is my red marking sampler um, by Brenda. It's by Brenda Keys um, from the sampler company. And I had to, um, when I bought it, it's a 32 count flax linen. I don't know the manufacturer. Um, I got it at Stitches Unlimited in Lancaster and I bought three skeins of Gentle Arts floss and cranberry. I don't know if it's because I messed up. I don't know what happened. But as you know, as you are aware from video one, I was that close to finishing and I ran out. So I looked and 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 finding floss in a certain color is difficult. Again, supply chain issues. I finally found a shop in Utah. I think I mentioned this last week that had the floss and I ordered two skeins. My husband said, you might as well get two better to have and not need and need not have. Now this will give you an idea of how dye lots change with over dyed floss. Because if you look at the very bottom of this, you can see how much darker it is than the rest of it. But I did one square at a time. Okay, one, one X at a time. So, and these aren't ironed, I apologize, but there it is. So the really darker floss is from right below the crowns down but I love it because it's red and um, red's the best color according to me. So yeah. So Hannah Wells, my red sampler is going to be framed. I don't know where I'm gonna put her. Um, if you watch Brenda and the Serial Starter, Brenda has samplers all over the place. And I was like, that's really cool. Um, so maybe I'm on that road too, I don't know. but. I love her, you know, she's, she's beautiful. And, um, it was nice not having to change colors all the time. So, yeah. So if you get a chance to work on it and, you know, a single color sampler, um, this was actually charted for DMC 347 and I wanted to try the gentle arts thread. Um, they also give the suggestion to do it in blue in DMC 830. Two, I think something like that. Um, so yeah, but those are my finishes. Two in one week. Surprise. So yes. Okay, let's move to haul. Um. So the first one I want to talk about is a new pattern from Lori Holt of Be in My Bonnet, and it is published by It's So Emma, which is part of Fat Quarter Shop. Um. And one of the things that Lori Holt says is be the boss of your own quilt. Okay. Um, I'm a firm, I mean, I'm not going to say that there are quilts out there that I've seen that I don't like. There are. Okay. Um, but it's not my place to be the quilt, the quilt police and say, that's bad, or you shouldn't have done it that way, or you shouldn't have put those fabrics together because it's not my place to judge. Okay. And you're going to make it the way you want it. You know, for example, um, when I was talking to someone or I posted something about my fabrics I chose for this, someone chimed in and said, well, you really need to make sure you have enough contrast. And I just said, thank you very much for your opinion. I'll, I'll make note of that. Um, but yeah, so I went to, as soon as I heard about it, I went to Fat Quarter Shop and I found the chart. And then there were also what they have labeled as add-ons. And in this case, it was a specific fabric that Lori recommends and Fat Quarter Shop curated a DMC thread pack. So I clicked both of the add-ons and I clicked add to cart. I have never had a problem with Fat Quarter Shop. Hit the, hit the, you know, purchase now or whatever and boom. Well, the package came the other day and I got the thread pack and I got the fabric, but the chart was nowhere to be found. So needless to say, I have a um, 
email into them. I know their staff, their short staff right now. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. But anyway, you can see a picture of it on the back of the thread pack. And of course, this is combining two of my favorite things. Okay, cross stitch and quilt blocks. All right. So this is the thread pack and I apologize for the glare. I just haven't taken them out. She, use a, she uses a lot of these colors in her charts, especially this one. Um, this is DMC 347 and she also uses 3328 a lot. So, you know, did I need to buy the thread pack? No, but why not? Again, I'm helping the economy. So yeah, so there's the thread pack and the fabric is Lori's 25 count even weave. Um, I don't know if it's Lugana, but it's an even weave and it's in cloud. So it's like a white. Again, I haven't taken it out yet and I'm sure it's way too big, but um, you know, what the heck? So that's on my list to, to kit up and work on in the future. And again, with DMC, it's, it's going to be a lot quicker because with DMC and it's not variegated, you can like stitch half of your X in a row for however many stitches you want. And then you go backwards. You don't have to worry about variegation. All right. Okay. So what else have I gotten? Well, I got, um, if you've been following Cottage Garden Samplings, A Year in the Woods, um, she's been doing an animal a month. Um, there's been a ferret, a rabbit, or a hare, I think, because it has bigger ears, um, a bear, an eagle. And this last one was an owl. Let me see it. Now my, one of my twins loves owls and we're a family very much of, you know, when we see something, it's like, Hey, do you like this? Would you want it? Blah, 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 blah. And if they don't like it or they don't want it, then I don't get it. So she said, Oh yeah, mom, that's really nice. So I bought the pattern and it's going to be a combination of, um, Weeks Dye Works and DMC. Now I could use DMC instead of the Weeks Dye Works, but why not? And, um, it uses picture this plus 40 count Valor linen. Again, finding certain colors of linen is difficult right now, but lo and behold, I went to Hobby House Needleworks and they have actually curated pieces to go with these animals. So, I'm inferring, okay, when I went and ordered the piece for this, I'm inferring that they're, they're cutting pieces for three of the animals at a time. So does that mean that she's breaking these animals up into four groups of three by season and putting them on different fabrics? I don't know. I don't have any, any of the anim other animals, but um, I was able to purchase a piece of 36 count Valor and um, I ordered the threads, the, the week style works threads. And, um, yeah, I'm anxious to start this one for my daughter. Um, I got, um, a Brenda Gervais pattern, happy birthday, America, you know, geeking out with my history background. Um, it's made into a drum. I don't know if you can see it. I've never made a drum. I don't have this fabric. I don't know if it's available and this little cake stand. I don't know if it's available, but, um, I thought it was cute. So yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, it says on the back items marked with an asterisk were, um, are available on a website. So, who knows? Maybe I can get, maybe I can get the ABC fabric and whatever. So one of these days I may try my hand at making a drum. I don't know. I'm just feeling the creative mojo here. All right. Um, another one I got is a, another Plum Street. Again, geeking out with my um, history background. 
peace, love, purpose. So this one combines the, you know, my love of quilts, because there's a quilt on the house, the history. That box down at the bottom is going to be a bear because it's all done in blue background. So, but, you know, do a little bit at a time. It's done on 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. Um, I did find a piece of it out there, but I don't think I um, ordered it. And the threads are a combination of Weeks Dye Works and one Classic Color Works. And they do give you the DMC conversion if you want to do that. But there you go. Okay. So that's on my list. I also got, where'd it go? I don't know where it went. Well, poo. Maybe I put it in some, oh, here it is. I also got, there was a big, 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 oh my gosh, we got to have this, um, of another Plum Street called Live on Little. And I fell in love with it. If you can see it. Um, a lot of blue. I must be turning into a blue person. Um, the whole Nantucket feel with the whales and the lobster and, and, you know, New England and things. But anyway, you know, the phrase is um, how great the blessing and vast the art to live on little with a thankful heart. And uh, I think we all, me included, need to learn to live on little as I show all these patterns and fabrics and things. So anyway, um, Farm Girl Dry Goods did a kit offering and it's sold out like that so I thought okay no biggie um I'll get the pattern and I'll get the threads and I'll get the fabric eventually and I'll do it um so it's a combination of Weeks Dye Works Classic Color Works DMC they also give you the DMC conversion if you choose to do that it's done on 36 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit um so I have the um, the Weeks Dye Works and the Classic Color Works ordered. Um, I got those from Hobby House when I ordered the others, and then I need to get certain DMC colors and the fabric. But I just think it's pretty. So that's Live on Little from Plum Street. They're fast becoming one of my favorites. The last cross stitch haul I have, um, I found on the group that I belong on in Facebook, um, Stash Unloading. Now, as I've said before, they're only accepting a certain number of people. If someone leaves, they add someone on um, and so forth. So um, I know I'm mentioning it, but I apologize. Okay. It's a buy sell group. And one very coveted pattern is from Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread called coming to America. And I found it and I snagged it. Now I knew it was the thread and I knew it was the pattern. I wasn't sure if it was the fabric and that's all I expected. She still had it all in the original box. I flipped when I opened it. So in this beautiful box, I got the DMCs. I got, oh, there's another one. I got the Classic Color Works and Weeks Dye Works. I got a corner gauge with the pilgrims on it. I got the fabric and it's already surged. I got um, this little card giving you a little background about the Pilgrims and Plymouth and Governor William Bradford. Um, I got, um, now this piece of fabric, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what it's for. It might be for the back of a pillow, but it's William Bradford's um diary entries, which is cool. I got, yeah, maybe it's for this. Yeah. So there was this celebrate harvest. I guess it's a bonus chart that was in it. And this little card that, you know, this, this is who made it. And this is when it was done. I got the needle minder. Little pilgrim. 
and I got the pattern. Uh, so yeah, it lists the names of the women that were on the Mayflower. And um, yeah, um, I'm guessing it was a 400th anniversary um, release of the landing at Plymouth Rock. So yeah, I was I was quite shocked when I opened up and found out that I got a whole thing. Whoops, forgot my little polka. So yeah, so that's my cross stitch haul. Um, all right. So back to the sale yesterday. Um, not only did I get the fat quarters and the uh, jelly roll in Nantucket. I was also looking at other fabrics and I put them away because I had redone the video and um, I thought, yeah, okay, we'll make some more project bags. And then of course my brain started working and I'm like, well, you need two of each one to make a project bag. Well, I couldn't find two of each one and I thought, okay, well, I can have one on the front and one on the back. And then I can do something else for the lining. I'm, that's okay. So what I got was, first of all, I did find two of each of these. I found cats. They're so cute. Little kitty cats. And Lana does like to write, walk across my keyboard. So anyway, I got two of those to make a project bag. So the cats will go on the outside. And then I got these little mouses for the inside. So yeah, that's going to be a project. And then I started looking through Lori Holt Fat Quarters. And most of this, I believe, is, believe is her cookbook line. But anyway, this is where I'm going to get into putting one on the front, one on the back, and then something else on the inside. So I bought um, these two to go together. And I'll have to remember to turn it like that. But anyway, yep. So that'll go together. And I got these two to go together. Lori's stuff reminds me of my grandmother's kitchen in Louisville um, in the 60s. I got this to go together. I love the fruit so much I got it in the other colorway. And I got this to go together. Oh, chickens. Let's put the chickens on top. Um, yeah. I was never a chicken person until Lori released her chicken salad quilt. And I must have really liked this and gotten an extra one because I can't count. But anyway, um, so I don't know what's going to go together, but I got those. So yeah, so those will be project bags eventually. Eventually. Um, I got to live a long time to get this stuff together. So that's my haul. So we've talked about mistakes. We've talked about cross stitch haul we've talked about finishes we've talked about quilting haul so one question I got last week was um to show how I organize things um which is I kind of chuckled when I read that comment because you know like uh, remember what my name is um so you can see behind me that 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 those are those those two sh units right there are my quilt books and um, I have more quilt books up there but it's just everything and in these two plastic drawer units I got from Michaels is floss and and fabric and charts um, they're full I've overgrown I've, I've I've outgrown them to the point where some of them are just sitting here on top and um this little three drawer plastic thing that my husband found in the basement has fabric in it and it's full so um anyway that's what that is now how do i organize the floss 
Well, I did have everything in drawers and I thought, you know, something's got to give. So I got, I made an investment in floss away bags. Now you don't have to invest in floss away bags particularly. And yes, that's what they're called. Floss away bags. Um, but that's what I did. And I got some three inch rings and I put my floss, my DMC floss, every color has its own bag. Some of them are, are fuller than others because I had floss and then my stepmother gave me hair floss. So for example, um, like this red, okay. But then like this one back here, 648, I only have one in there. This was from blue skin. So yeah. So I have numerous rings filled with bags for my DMC. My, um, my Weeks Dye Works and Classic Color Works and General Arts, they're just in that drawer. But in order to keep track of what I have and where it is, I created a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet. Um, so when I have the floss in my possession, I just put a little one in the spreadsheet, but then I also started making note of where it is. So that way, if, you know, I, I get in the mood to start a certain project and the floss exists in another kitted project, I can pull it out. Um, yeah, I could go buy another skein, but I, I, I live almost a half an hour away from Joanne's. And I, you know, it, I was never just a run someplace where I, when I want something, um, I try to combine trips. So, especially when gas is now what between four fifty and five dollars a gallon. So that's that. Okay, so that's how I do that. So when I pull threads for a project, I'll go through and I'll pull them off the rings and I'll put them on another ring and I'll put them in a, in a bag. Um. Another thing I'm going to do, and I got this idea from um, Brenda and Laura, Brenda and the Serial Starter, who got it from Michelle at Mama Loves You GB. And they got um, floss drops that are unique to themselves. And they put their floss on it. So I think Laura got hers from Vistaprint. And I, I will say they're not cheap, but last week I got an email that they were having a sale. And then for some reason with my MasterCard, my Capital One card, I got another discount. So melt that plastic, people. And mine look like this. So I will get a, you know, it says my name, the disorderly stitcher. And then it says um, bringing life together with needle and thread. Now this is not my picture. I got it off of Google Images. Um, so there's the front. So I'm gonna get a um, three quarter inch maybe or whatever, five eighths of an inch hole punch to punch a hole down on this end so I can thread my floss through and then I'll get another single, you know, regular old single punch and punch a hole here so they go on the rings. But then I also took the time to do that so I will write the brand of the floss it is. And if it's not a DMC, I will write down the color. And if it is a DMC, I'll write down the number. And eventually this will just go back in my floss away bag. Now the whole idea with this, not only was to use it for your own floss, but then it's like trading cards. Um, I don't know if any of you grew up in the 70s, but remember we had those wacky cards that, you know, like took the names of, of products and changed their names and made them weird. Yeah, and we used to trade them. Kids today, I guess, trade Pokemon cards. Um, so yeah, that's that's the whoops, that's the idea. I just thought it was cool. And they're a nice heavy card. Now, 911 Stitcher shows you how to make these out of um, poster board and like um, scrapbook paper. 
Now I could do that, but I don't have time. And when I got a sale, why not? Okay. So anyway, that's that. Okay. What's left? Oh, quilt organization. So I was also asked, I'm guessing when it was asked about organization, um, how do I organize stuff? Well, by my sewing machine right now, I have, oh, there's my glue stick. I have um, this basket. There's another bobbin with um, one and a half inch. There's another bobbin. One and a half inch squares in what I would call neutrals and not neutrals. Okay, so you're you're probably sitting there going, well, why is that a neutral? Well, to me that reads more white than red. And if I put it up against this blue, okay, so that's why that is. Now, this isn't my invention, it's Bonnie Hunter, okay, from Quiltville. So I have them divided into two different piles, um, the lighter ones and the darker ones. And I keep this by my machine in this basket. And then, more junk in that basket. After a while, so when I sew those together as my leaders and enders, instead of just sewing on the same fabric over and over again, I have my twosies, which I've shown you before. And then eventually I will start sewing my, my twosies into foursies. Okay. So those are my one and a half inch squares. And, um, so here's, here's a foursie. Okay. And that'll be a scrap quilt. Same thing with, with two inch squares, same thing with, um, two and a half inch squares. Um, I have a cabinet with all of my strips, my scrappy strips in, um, Bonnie, um, her stash, uh, organization system she cuts her strips into one and a half two two and a half and three and a half because as she says they all play nicely together so i have a six drawer cabinet that i got from ikea and um my husband painted it red for me and uh so it's full of strips that i need to use up and each strip like i have a one and a half inch strip drawer and then i have a two inch drawer for lights and darks you know two drawers and then i have my two and a half and then all my three and a half which i don't have a lot of are in another drawer so that's that. So when I'm cutting, if I have a little piece, like this is an extra piece and I will cut this down into two inch and one and a half, as many as I can get. And up there I have boxes and I put little pieces, little post-it notes on them, labeling them two, one, 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 one and a half, two and a half and two. And I have a box for um, the lights and a box for the darks. So for example, this is my two inch light box. Now these boxes I got at Target. I think you can get five of them for, I don't know how much, 10, 12 bucks, but they're shoe boxes. So here's my two inch neutrals. Okay, and you can see I don't have many of them left. I need to cut up some, all right? So there's my two inch neutrals. In fact, oh my goodness, these all need to go in there. And then I have my two inch darker ones. And you can see I have a lot of these. But I have anything from, um, this was from my daughter. Um, I just lost it. The movie with Jack Skellington in it. Anyway, yeah, by Tim Burton. So I have that. I have pieces of men's shirts in here that, um, shirts I got at, at Goodwill. A couple shirts that were my husband's. Um, I have Easter bunnies. I have flowers. I have, um, 
Civil War. I have, you know, you name it, it's in here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, so as I need more by my sewing machine, I just reach over and I get them. And my daughter just brought me a bunch of squares. She's, she's in the process of moving from um, Lebanon County, Pennsylvania to Silver Spring. So she just brought me all these and I need to go through them and sort them lights and neutrals and whatever. So yeah, she doesn't know how to do that yet. Now, some of them, um, it, it can be difficult to decide if they are a light or a dark. And I have been known to turn them over and use the other side of the fabric. Um, I mean, you buy the fabric and you have two sides of it. Why not? All right. So like this is a really, really pale yellow. Well, if you don't like the idea of a yellow, then just turn it over and it's a white. Because most fabrics are printed. They're not, you know, it's not like the color goes all the way through. Um, you know, here's one. How would you, how would you label that? You know, there's enough light in there that I would say that's a, that's a neutral. Um, this one, it's really gold. I don't think you can see it, but I can always turn it over. And I have bumblebees. So that's all there is to it. Um, and then as I, you know, if I need um, nine patches, I can pull them out and I can make scrappy nine patches. Um, but that's all I do. So, um, you know, here's black with white dots on it. And here's stars, white with, white with black stars on it. So that's, that's how I, I organize my scraps. And I didn't, again, I didn't get this from me. I got it from Bonnie Hunter. And, you know, to me, she is like the, the scrap guru. Um, and I, I'm sure maybe that some of her dot ideas, you know, sort of blended with someone else's ideas. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, scraps were what women used years ago because that's all they had. And, um, you know, they would cut up their shirts and they would cut up their dresses and, and they they made utility quilts and they weren't for for fancy they were for use and um you know if you remember in the 30s with the uh feed sacks, 30s and 40s they would they would um cut them up and make clothes out of them so yeah now do I save every single little piece of fabric? No. Um, I had um, just strips of fabric and I would string piece them and I will talk about string piecing um, another time. But I had to clean up some things in here and one of my friends from Guild said, I'll take them. I said, go for it. Because I'm sure that I will keep making strips and strings and um, I will never run out. Um, and even doing this, this quilt, I have started to um, save some like one inch strips. So maybe someday I can make a pineapple quilt or a log cabin quilt. So I don't know if that answers the question about organization. Um, I have stuff all over this room. Um, maybe what I will do is take some pictures and then put them on the front of a video sometime. And uh, you can just see how much stuff I have in this little 10 by 10 room. And um, I can't use all the space in this room because there is a door out the back of the house in this room. And my husband won't let me block the door. He has this thing about safety. I get it. Um, so anyway. Um, so that's really all I have this week. So. Um, we had a giveaway last week for this reprint of 
Prairie Schoolers from 1990, 1994, and 2005. Um, and I asked you a question about snacking. And um, a lot of people, they snack on almonds, they snack on M&Ms, they, they try not to snack because they don't want it all over their, their stuff. And I get that. Totally get that. I snack more when I sew on the machine than I do when I cross stitch. But anyway, so I use the random comment generator and our winner is Lynn Sedlak. Lynn Sedlak. So if you are watching this video, do me a favor, please, and email me at nabender62 at gmail.com. Now the email address is below the video. Email me with your full name and address, and I will get this to you ASAP. Okay? So, again, I want to thank you for all of your kind comments. Um, I'm glad I'm entertaining some of you because, you know, life's short. Might as well have some fun. So, um, I will be back. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be next week. It might be in a couple weeks. Um, as I said, videos are going to be um, probably a little less regular when school starts. I'll do the best I can. So with that being said, you have a wonderful week. Um, enjoy your, your creations. Um, enjoy your creative time. And I will see, see you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.